had a lot of previous jobs. Um, again, lots of part-time jobs to try to get in the industry. I was a taxi driver, I was a barman, um, I worked as a contract fencer, and I don't mean on guard, I mean, you know, fen putting up fences. Uh, perhaps the most unusual one was I was a grave digger for a while in Nudgee Cemetery in Brisbane. And the worst job I had there was to exhume six nuns um, that were being moved from one cemetery to another. Fortunately, the coffins were lead-lined. But, you know, that's how you get into the industry. The key to managing a successful project is to always put the project before everything else. Don't have any other agendas um, and make, you know, the quality of the project determine all your decisions. The other thing I would say is if you want to be the best, work with the best. Um, and uh, if it's a, a drama, um, you know, casting is just vital. You know, when you're starting out, don't use amateur actors, use professional actors. And casting is kind of critical. Even when you're working with professionals, professionals, if you don't get the right person for the part, it can be fatal. Story, of course, is important to everything. And, you know, you can never have a story too perfect. But, uh, yeah, they're the elements, I think. It's hard, hard to describe a, a typical day as a film producer, um, you know, you could go years in between films. You know, someone like Terence Malick, was he made five films in 50 years, you know. So what's a typical day? Oh, get out of bed, you know, um, don't do anything all day because you don't have the finance to make a film. But uh, on the days that you're in production, I'll, I'll perhaps look at that. Um, a typical day would begin at, I don't know, 4 a.m. So you get, get up, go out onto the set with the crew, uh, make sure that the machine is, you know, working properly as it should, be around to you know, answer any questions. Once you're kind of happy that it's going, you go back to the production office um, in the morning and you go through all the pro reports from the previous day. So you go through, uh, you know, mostly the, the, the reports from the laboratory and the reports, um, uh, re the cost reports. If you do hot, hot cost reports from the previous day, so you keep an eye on, on the money. You'd pay people, you'd do some checks, uh, you might have to take um, some people out to lunch, you know, um, you know local counsellor, take someone to the set, you know, some of that kind of PR work. Uh, maybe do an interview, um, and then in the afternoon, um, you'd probably go back to the set and you'd be there to worry about it, you know, going into overtime, which is always a cost issue. And, um, and often, you know, production manager wants to talk to you when you get to that point where you might be looking like you want to finish a scene and go into overtime. And of course, you've got to be around to authorise that if it happens. You also have to be on call for any crisis that might occur at any point, which, you know, can, can happen. You know, someone might have dropped that baby on the set. Um, and, uh, you know, so there's, you have to be uh, there and then you watch the rushes at the end of the day from the previous day. So the long days in production. If I was Arts Minister for a day, I would regulate the cinema industry. Uh, television has regulation for Australian content. Broadcasters uh, are required to show it. Uh, the ra radio, um, you know, has Australian content regulations. But there are really no uh, quotas, no requirements for Australian content in the cinema. And what I'd like to see is um, the application of some kind of content system whereby the distributors who, you know, and the distributors which have branch offices in Australia take away from this country 700 million a year from the Australian box office on these big American blockbusters. I'd like to see them be forced to commit to, you know, one or two films every year, but commit real money to them because at the moment they will do it out of some sense of obligation, you know, because they, they're guilty about the amount of money they're ripping out of the country. But they'll do it, but they'll do it half-heartedly, you know. They won't give you much of a distribution guarantee. They won't spend a lot of money on, on P&A, on prints and advertising, you know. So uh, what I want, I'd love to see is a real commitment. So th the films would get better. If they took greater risks and they were forced to be involved and they were forced to be in a position where they would lose money, then I think you'd see the quality of the films go up. So if I was Arts Minister, um, I would regulate the cinema industry. The planet is shrinking. Uh, media and communications are everywhere now. Um, so we've got a global industry and how we maintain Australia's place in it, how we keep telling our stories, 
but we also have to tell stories to a global audience. We have to change the kind of stories that we tell in order to access global. We're competing globally now. I think this is the biggest challenge that the digital revolution has brought upon us. Um, the internet's a global, uh, you know, communication system. And we now know, this, uh, one, of, one of the worst things about this is that, you know, there's no uh, territory left to be found. You know, the, the biggest challenge, I think, for the film and television industry is to adapt to this global industry. And we need to move our systems, our regulation systems, so that they can um, adapt to telling stories for the world. Mm -hmm.